question from Mike. Please. Like, you know that's how it is? Like, no. you kiss your ugly frog. And, and it becomes a prince? It becomes a prince, yeah. I, I just, I I just, just been kissing frogs. Like, no princess kisses Princess the frog? You no princess. But you're the princess, though. No, I'm not a princess. And you're a queen. But you want to f- kiss the frog, tell him to a prince. And you're a princess. But I've just seen frogs on me. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> to my channel today thank you so much for watching today i have my beautiful friends here lillian and sabrina so lillian sabrina and i are going to be talking we're going to have a girl chat really um we're going to be talking about a bunch of different topics and we're really going we're going to flow um i thought that bringing them together and having a conversation was important because there we have a lot of things that we share we have a lot of things in common um so yeah we're just going to go into the conversation if you have not subscribed please go ahead and subscribe to my channel don't forget to like don't forget to leave a comment in the section in the comment section below and please let me know what kinds of videos you guys want to see let me know who you want on this channel and what kinds of conversations you want us to have as we sit and have uncomfortable conversations so ladies thank you so much for coming on here today welcome girl Anytime. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So let's talk about. Let's start off talking about the pressure of getting married in an African home and in a black home, right? So when I say black, African American. Um, so tell me, first of all, have you felt the pressure? Let's start there. I'm gonna start off with you. Personally, I haven't. Okay. I okay. How about you, Sabrina? I don't feel pressure from others. I feel pressured from myself. Okay. Because of my age. I think I'm older than both of y'all, right? <laughs> no, I am. You, I, I don't. I'm older than you, Liz. You're 20. I'm 26. Yeah, I'm older than you. And you're 32. No, you're not. No, she's not. How old are you? 29. Okay, I'm 20. Okay. I'm turning. I'm 27. I'm gonna be 28 yeah, I'm older in than September. Both of you, so I just feel pressure from myself. Okay. Why? Because I'm about to be there. No, well, it is. it's because I'm about to be 30. Okay. And not only is age a factor, but my career and my income is a factor. So I didn't thrive right after college. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to okay. find my niche. I had to find what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then once I found what I wanted to do, I had to make my name for myself and move up within my company. You know right. what I mean? Okay. So this is all just happening within the last two years. And I'm like, I have a new position now. I got a little extra coin, mm-hmm. you know? So now I'm 29 yes. and I'm like, okay, where's my frog so I can kiss it? Yeah. So I don't feel pressure from like, <laughs> please. Like, you know that's how it is. Like no. you, you kiss your ugly frog, and, and it becomes a prince. It becomes a prince. Yeah. I, 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 I just been kissing frogs. Princess, no princess kissing princess the frog. No princess. But you're the princess though. No, I'm not a princess. And you're a queen. But you want to f- kiss the frog, tell him to a prince. And you're a princess. But I've just seen frogs on me. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So Lily, you haven't f- felt any kind of pressure at all. I haven't felt any kind of pressure because my parents, you know, haven't put that pressure on me. Okay. But I've had friends whose parents have put that pressure on them. Okay. And I can kind of see how it has transformed them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, likely it kind of rushes them to just find somebody, mm-hmm. anybody at right. this point. Right. You know, and just say, okay, let me just marry them for the sake of my parents. But my thing is, have you really sat down to figure out if this is the person you really want to live with for the rest of your life? Right. You know, are you just doing it because your parents want you to get married or because mm-hmm. your parents want you to have kids? You know, parents want grandbabies and things like that. And it's like, of course, my thing is growing up, your parents want you to be in school, mm-hmm. get your degree, mm-hmm. no boyfriends, mm-hmm. no girlfriends. Yes, no, when it's time it. for marriage, they yes. expect a man to, or a woman to magically appear yes. on your front door. So that's the thing. How does that, that work? That's the thing that without time. That's the, that's the thing that bothers you. Meet me. the man and you get married. You don't like just they have a friendship. It's almost like they teach you about everything else, but then when it's time to get married, it's like first yeah. of all, more of them are yeah. talking. You're like, yes. yes. I mean, you know what's going on. I mean, I haven't personally had any kind of pressure for my parents to get married. But I definitely know people who have, mm-hmm. you know, been pressurized. You know, I'm not trying to be tribalistic or anything, but I know that Igbo people in Nigeria have yes. that pressure. Of course. You know, um, yes, we sure do. Exactly. So for me, it's just like they teach you everything else, or they ask you, first of all, school, mm-hmm. then 
it almost feels like get married have kids and then it's like what next yeah you know what i'm saying yes but a lot of people now a lot of women now are working and, and saying okay you know what i don't just want to graduate yeah and get married mm-hmm. actually i want to stack up my coins i want to do xyz i want to live a little bit yeah. i want to yeah. travel Definitely. i want to do these things Definitely. so do you feel like that is something that a lot more women should be thinking about doing in their early 20s and and sabrina you said you're almost 30 I'm, like there's also that thing where at 30 why do you feel like 30 is it just seems like the magical number now i'm going to say it again yeah. like i feel pressure for myself only because now i feel like i'm where i send my need to be like i'm not like mentally i'm ready not to get married but mentally i'm ready for something you know new, serious something serious, serious. something yeah. long lasting you know i like deal with things in the past but like just in general like 30 is i think 30 is a good number because at 25 i if i had the right guy i wouldn't have done anything with him you know because I was, I was i was having fun so i just think like now is the time that like i'm being more pressured than ever because i was never worried about a husband i was never worried about a man i was always worried about getting money just to be honest like i, I want to have a good career right. i want to have a business or two i want right. to have maybe a house you know what i mean i was worried about other things and right. then now that those things are coming into form it's like okay i want to share this with somebody you know right. and yeah. this just happened to be the age and right. i think that 30 is the age that most people finally kind of grow into themselves. Like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know what I mean? Now, like I said, I have my parents, they, they, I'm American. So mm-hmm. we was kind of raised like, get it out the mud, get it on your own, yes. take care of yourself, take care of your kids. Right. A man is not really permanent. You never know which way he, the, the wind might blow him. Mm-hmm. So we, it was never like, go find your man. It was mm-hmm. like, get your coin. So now that I have gotten it or, I'm getting I'm there. Like half of it. No. Now I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't have to have all the money in the world, but if I have a two income household, we can work some out. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, growing up in a Nigerian household is definitely very, very, very different. Okay. Because as from a teenager, you know, you're in high school, your parents, they just want you to get straight A's. Mm. Let's be at the highest rank in your class. Right. So, you know, they're not talking to you about real life things. They want you to be the best of the best, even if you have to break your back to be the best. Right. You understand? Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes we lose ourselves trying to make ourselves seem perfect. Mm-hmm. Just trying to get to that point of like, okay, my dad said I need to, I need to be up here, and right. I need to be up here. Right. So we're 16 in high school. Okay, I need to be up here. That same mindset you carry to college. By the time you get to college, sometimes they're like, okay. Go be an engineer, go be a doctor, go be a nurse, go be this, go be, go be a lawyer, go be mm-hmm. this, go be that. Not everybody gets into school as soon as you don't you mm-hmm. know college. <laughs> Some people take two, three, four, five years. Six, seven. Six, seven. And yeah. that's like, in that time, what are you doing? Your parents think you're a failure, you're this, you're that, you're this. You don't feel like you want to get married at that time. You know right. what I'm saying? Because you're not really established. Right. And not only that, like you're... I know Nigerian parents force you to be these big things, like an engineer and a doctor, right? So you're going to school to be those things and you're failing because that's not where your heart is. Exactly. And you may flourish in being a content creator. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you avoid all that time trying to be a doctor that you right. never, now that you're finally doing what you want to do, you're like 30 now. Exactly. But whose fault is that? You know what I mean? So one of my biggest things is not having conversations, right? I feel like yes. Nigerian parents are not willing to have conversations with their kids. Yes. And I, you know, it, I mean, throw it back to whatever generation you want to kind of think about it. Because right. I, my mom had me when she was 16 and I'm pretty sure at the time when she was 16, it was, of course it was a taboo right. to have kids, you of know, course. you know, out of wedlock. But I mean, it happened, right? And my grandparents raised me and all of that. But at the end of the day, I feel like parents are not having the right kinds of conversations with your kids, mm-hmm. right? It's, right? It's not really about, and, and the thing about it is like, for me, the biggest thing, is especially now that, you know, I'm at an age where I'm thinking about getting married and thinking about raising kids, I feel yeah. like one of the most important things for me is knowing my kids. Yes. Like, I don't want to ever be a parent who does not know their, yeah. their kids. Yeah. And you I know what I'm saying? Like, your parents do not know their kids. Yes. They think, that, oh, my kid is the greatest, da, 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 but, but they don't, don't know. Behind back doors. Exactly. And it's, a, a lot of times it's because we're not even given the chance to be vulnerable. With First them. of all, we don't even have a chance to be vulnerable with our parents. We don't have a chance to be vulnerable with our friends. Mm-hmm. We just don't have a chance to be vulnerable, yeah. period. Because, yeah. like I was asking, are black women conditioned, or black people, or I mean, just human beings, right. are we conditioned to be strong 
because we just feel like everything that happens around us, we can just soak it in. We can just yeah, take it in just and we can just keep it moving. And now you're hearing things about therapy. People are people yeah. are getting more comfortable and normalizing it's therapy. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. gonna tap into that because yeah. that's, that's a, I promise y'all that was a big thing. Like 2019 was like my year of like mental health. Right. And I, I'm not saying like it was healthy mental. It was like me realizing that I had issues that I never spoke about. Generational right? trauma. I had no my dad, and if I was to talk to my dad right now, and if everybody knows me personally, know like I idol my dad, you know. Mm-hmm. And when I was going through like my deepest, darkest, whatever depression or whatever, I would talk to my daddy, and he'll be like, "No, you're okay. You're okay. You're a big girl. Go to work." You know, like. And I'm just like, I know my daddy loves me, but like this is a real thing. Like, yeah. I've I've saw a therapist, and she told me that this is what I'm struggling with, and my that they don't talk about those things. Right. And it's not because they don't know; it's just because they they had no outlet, they had no cure back right. then. So right. So you just covered over the rug, and you're okay. You know. What so I'm so you feel like so. See, and that's the they're thing. doing what they know. Yes. And they're I, doing I, what I think they that's, know. that's another problem. Learning to sweep things under the rug without talking about it creates a lot of more problems in the future. Right. Yeah. You know, like. Even with marriage, or even the topic about marriage, people like to sweep things under the rug. If it bothers you, speak on it. Right. But that's how I feel these days. Yeah. It's learning how to be vulnerable. It's vulnerable. But it's also not that easy because to be vulnerable, to me, first I have to trust. Right? Uh-huh. I, I can't, un- unless I'm just at this point where I'm at my highest self and I'm like, okay, I want to share and influence right. others, whatever. Mm-hmm. But to really get deep and down and say, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable to tell you that this is what I went through and this is how I overcame it. That, to me, that involves trust. I'm not going to sit there and tell you, like, oh, I went through this and I went through that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I don't trust you me. enough because some of those things are things that I am still ashamed of. You know right. what I'm saying? That's so true. True. Um, being vulnerable kind of is like, you know, it's, 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 it's some great area. I think, I think. Another thing, really, as we even carry on this conversation is, is I mean, there's a side of things where you want to be vulnerable and you want to be honest with, with someone or with, you know, with people around you. But then it's also you growing into your own person and knowing that these are things that you struggle with or admitting to yourself that actually, you know what? I have these things that I got to work on or you know I have these things that I'm struggling with and I need to speak to someone or I need to talk to someone because a lot of people don't even have that confidence you know I was I was watching um, a couple a couple days ago I was watching this lady who was a marriage therapist um, on Instagram secret place wife and she was talking to people about getting married Mm -hmm. um, at a young age and a lot of women that were married you know came on and they were saying you know what if I had known I'd have waited until I was 30 Mm -hmm. I'd have waited until I was 31 or 32 I mean I mean that's one aspect but there's also the aspect of having kids when you're over a certain age Mm -hmm. you know which is a different conversation but then a lot of a lot of women that were speaking on there came and came on and said, you know what, I got married at 23 and I wish I didn't. Right. Or I got married at 24 and I wish I didn't. And a lot of them it was because they felt like they didn't even know who they were. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, I felt like 2019 was a year where I was almost like forced to grow into the, the, the woman that God has called me to be in so many ways. You know, and one of the things mm-hmm. that I built mm-hmm. in that period was confidence, you know, to do certain things, to be able to have boundaries, to be able to have conversations, mm-hmm. to be able to really say how it hurts yeah. and where it hurts. It's, it's because people mm-hmm. cannot treat you how you want to be treated if they don't know what mm-hmm. they're treating. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If they don't yeah, know sure. who they're dealing with. So what would you guys say is what has helped with being more vulnerable in, in, your, in your relationships or in your friendships and things like that? What has made you more vulnerable? Aside from trusting people, what is something that you feel like do you feel like because you know yourself more, you trust more, and you're, you're I don't able even, to speak more? To, for me, I don't think I, I don't think it's because I know myself more. It's because of me just having friendship that I know myself more. If that makes sense, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think being vulnerable requires for you to have somebody, right? You have to have somebody to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You have to have somebody you trust. Mm-hmm. You have to have somebody you're, you love. You have to have that. And I think once you, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a person that's like. I have friends and I don't want to lose. And to me, that's toxic because I don't want to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the type of person. I'm not going to be the she shared things with me. It may not be personal, but now I'm able to open up and think like, well, hey, 
I think I like the You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think just having relationships, period, period allows you to be vulnerable. Yeah. It does still require trust, but you can't just be vulnerable just by yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You have to have somebody that you're close-knit with, that you trust, that you love, to allow that to happen. So I think just having basic relationships, whether it's friendship, whether it's marriage, mm. whether it's a sister, brother, or even a therapist yeah. if you don't have that, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's for me. So, so as women of faith and women that, you know, are very intentional about you know we, we 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 can we can all say that we're intentional about about our relationships with god we're not perfect but you know god is important and so what are some of the things that you guys feel like you have to unlearn in order for you to live life to the fullest for me you have to unlearn that you know life is only once mm-hmm. you don't get this life again so i learned that two years ago and i was like you know what I'm going to start putting myself first. Mm-hmm. I was always a person that kept putting other people before me, mm-hmm. kept neglecting myself right. and all of that. And that put me in a bad position to where I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of worrying about how people think about me. I'm tired of the side. Con- I'm tired of every pressure. It was just like, you know what? Let me just do me because I don't know when my time is going to be up on this earth. Nobody right. knows when the time is going to be up. So when you know that time is not on your side time is ticking Mm -hmm. you live life to the fullest Mm -hmm. because you never know any second can go by and it may be your last breath we don't know right you know and i I cherish moments more friends family i just want to be around people because like i said tomorrow is never promised right you know so that has helped me to say like you know what i'm gonna live my life Mm -hmm. i'm gonna live it whether it's in school or it's at work or it's wherever but live your life to the fullest. So you you've had to unlearn that being selfish is is um is a bad thing, right? So you've had to kind of think about it the other way around. Like yeah. it's okay to be it's selfish. okay to be selfish. It's okay with to be selfish. You know, right. You, right. you shouldn't have to neglect yourself a hundred percent to please other people. You shouldn't have to yeah. neglect yourself. Period. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't. You so shouldn't have to I had to learn. That. I had to learn that. Yeah, I really did because, because I really feel like if you're not. If you're not the best version of yourself or working to be the best version of yourself, then you mm-hmm. cannot be the best version of yourself for other people. For the people. And you can't give what you don't you have. You can't give what you don't have. And I have. think that's something that, for me, what I had to unlearn was stop hiding stuff. So that, for me, that turns into being transparent. I was always a person like, I'm secretive. I, I have like a big thing on privacy. I don't want you to know nothing. who I'm talking nothing. to. Nothing. I don't want you to know about <laughs> work. I don't want you to know what kind of car I drive. I was just like big on like secrecy. You know what I mean? Right. And just those small things is like kind of shallow, right? But for me, being transparent is showing like, I'm going through this right now. Right. And, and it's okay. I don't know where I'm going with it, but, but this is what I'm going through. You know what I mean? So for me, it was like I had to unlearn that. And that's kind of something that my parents, or well, my family kind of was raised up as like, don't tell nobody your business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside people don't need to know. But it's like, no, I, I want to tell people because I need help. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. I want somebody that may have went through this or somebody That's, that knows better than me to, yes. to do it. So for me, it's been being transparent. Stop hiding everything. Now, I'm not saying I share everything, but I'm way more open if someone was to ask. Like, right. hey, yeah, I, I went through depression. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I did. And yeah, I see a therapist. We I still see about one the, to the topic of depression. In a Nigerian home, they don't believe no in depression. depression. Yeah. Right. They right. don't believe in the topic that your child can be depressed. Yeah. They think that you're t- just because your child says, oh, daddy, I don't feel like going here. Oh, it's okay. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> but the child is really going yeah. through something mentally. Yeah. Right. And if the child tells you, hey, dad, I'm not feeling good, the, the parents never want to like go in depth as to why, like my child, what is going on. Mm-hmm. They just assume that, oh, you'll be all, you be all right tomorrow. Oh, you, maybe, you feel a little sick? That's it. But they never mm-hmm. want to go into that to, to figure out like what is the actual problem, and then you see why kids up and down are younger and younger committing suicide. Yeah, yeah. literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like I've never heard of Nigerian kids committing suicide. It's become more recent nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's like they're feeling neglect mm-hmm. from parents, yeah. from yeah. friends, from yeah. whatever. You know, and it's, it's not good. And that's why transparency just brings about a whole new level. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? If you're transparent, you you. you yeah, you exactly. Free. You know, yeah, that's a good word. But I had a, I had a therapist. Well, I still have her. I don't care to share her name or nothing. That's kind of private. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, so I was I started seeing a, a therapist or whatever, Case and I was kind of secretive about that because I was like, I don't want nobody think somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was like, I don't want to share that. And so I was talking to um, 
one of the this girl that I knew at my job, mm-hmm. and she had a therapist in the same building that my therapist worked in. Oh. Um, yeah, and so I was like, well, she didn't even say she had a therapist. She mentioned the lady's name, and the one of the the lady that she mentioned was her therapist. But I knew that lady because she was my therapist maybe for a day because my therapist wasn't available. Okay. Oh. And so it came up, so I was like, wait. You know this lady? Is she a therapist? She was like, yeah, I see her all the time. And I was like, oh, she, she's open to say, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. So I think just being transparent, just opening doors. Because now me and her are really close. Just because, see, just, just because only, from that conversation. Just only, that conversation. only because she yeah, said that she's a therapist. You know what I mean? So just to be transparent. It may not be something that's extravagant or broad, but just mm-hmm. you being able to share something that you've been through or something that you do daily. It could be bike riding. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being yeah. transparent about that and saying, hey, this is what I do right. to relieve stress or to work out. And if you want to, you know what I mean? So, right. so let me yeah. ask you, was there a time you had to be transparent? Like with anybody, it could be friends or oh, yeah. anything. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. There's been a lot so of times that helps you like grow as a woman or until we become today. And so, so I guess being being transparent is hard, right? Yes. I'm just gonna start off by saying that. And sometimes, in fact, a lot of times it's uncomfortable and it could even be painful. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because, like you said, mm-hmm. it's the you know you've gone through certain things and it's the shame right Mm -hmm. you don't want people to know you're not you're not willing to open up about these things because you just you're not ready Mm -hmm. for everybody else to kind of see you you know what i'm saying so it's 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 funny that you asked that because when some i was thinking about the word intimacy and how Mm -hmm. you know i I can't remember who it was that described it as into me see and for me i was just like yeah Yeah. like into me see like i'm not ready for you to into me see i'm just not ready but you know i've had to be transparent with my boyfriend you know i've had to be transparent with him on Mm -hmm. on so many levels on so many things that honestly if i if i if i'm being completely honest i would i do want to be transparent about you know what i'm saying but i but i also was able to point very early on in our relationship and even just even just as a human being that you know what moving forward i don't want to live a life where i'm not able to tell people that love me and people that i love the honest truth about the things yeah. that i'm dealing with yeah. mm-hmm. right so there are different points where i've had to be transparent about things even things that are the most mundane things like mm-hmm. just bare things you know what I'm, saying? I'm not someone who would come and be like oh you know what that thing that happened the other day pissed me off or mm-hmm. you know you made right. me feel some type of way you can't right. you literally have to poke yeah right so sometimes mm-hmm. my boyfriend would literally be like okay so i know you said you're fine but are you really, are you really fine okay. because tomorrow will say she's fine but mm-hmm. really she's, she's not, not fine, fine. Exactly. and then it'll come up again in another conversation it'll come up again later on mm-hmm. or i have a a, a, a smart mouth mm-hmm. or you know just like my facial expression you just know that something is wrong, wrong. but i don't want to talk about it you know, because I'm not used to talking about things that are wrong with me. Exactly. However, I'm very used to listening to people talk about things that are going on with, with them. them. That's yes. com- that's my comfort. That's comfortable for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm okay with just listening. Like I can listen. Yeah. I can give advice. I can tell you if mm-hmm. if I've had an experience. I can probably share. But it literally it will take dragging, <laughs> dragging things out yeah. of me. So yeah, there's been tons of times where I've had to be transparent, but it's definitely helped me grow. It's it's helped me build my confidence as well because I have, and I think also, shout out to my boyfriend because I've, I also have someone who is intentional about reminding me that it's okay to be transparent. It's okay yes. to say your yes. truth. Yeah. It's okay to voice your truth because it's not gonna make me love you any different. It's not yes. gonna change anything. I would just rather operate from a place of knowing yes. as opposed to operating from a place of Blindness. Blind. You know what I'm saying? Like I just don't know what's going on. So I don't know how to treat you because I'm just not getting anything from you. Yeah. Period. Yeah. How about you? Have you had a time where you've had to be transparent and vulnerable and and has that helped you grow? Did you have a good experience or I mean, it's been a whole bunch of times where I've had to be transparent but mm-hmm. it wasn't upfront. Like it wasn't like, oh you be, be transparent and I was transparent you gotta yeah. you gotta keep poking me because like okay. I said I was raised on privacy and secrecy so mm-hmm. I don't want to tell you what I'm thinking in my head like because mm-hmm. I'm probably thinking something that's you know really crazy you know what I mean like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's kind of yeah it's like you know <laughs> for me you gotta keep poking the bear like you gotta keep 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 for doing you. it and so yeah. all of those poking kind of allow me at this point to be like look I'm just gonna tell you up front now because yeah. I, I don't want you to poke you no more right. don't don't exactly. poke me let me let, let, let me just tell you and that's like with everything it, Sometimes it's work, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I have coworkers or whatever, because we kind of 
a superior to some like I oversee you know certain things or whatever and um there's a lot of things that I'm like a type of person like if I want it done right I'm gonna do it myself right I, let me do this don't, don't worry about it mm-hmm. but you can't do that all the time you know you, you have can. to have, let people lead you know and um I would just do it and I would be like mad in my head like these people not do shit like you know what I mean like oh my god like just <laughs> oh wow like just, don't don't worry about it I'll do it you know and I'm like no <laughs> let me be tra- let me be transparent mm-hmm. right and show them what I prefer what I like right. what I what's expected of them right. instead of holding it in and you know expecting just, something that they don't even know they have no idea you're punishing right. them for something that they, <laughs> they don't, don't even know what they're doing true. is their best true. self right yes. that's and not to you that's not the, be- that's the not best. best yeah yeah not at all <laughs> say is a common fear what is a common fear that you've had as a woman like a fear mm. that you've always said oh, you've just had a common fear mm, that's a good question well um i guess a common fear i've just had is just being honest with myself mm. like you want to lie so much to displease that person like even though you're angry you tell them i'm not angry mm. But, but you're really, really like, you're <laughs> boiling. Your blood is boiling like high. But you just like, you know what? Let me just just so you can look presentable. You won't look crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think my, my last my last relationship before my boyfriend now is what taught me that you know what, you need to speak up. Mm-hmm. Because you were dealing with abuse mm-hmm. in a way that it was like, mm-hmm. if you don't speak up now. Right. You're not gonna speak of any other time. Yeah. You know. So that really made me say, you know what? I can't fear this anymore. Right. I'm I can't. For myself. I, I can't. I have. I have to stick up for myself. Right. I have to talk for myself. Mm-hmm. You know. With that relationship, I never told anybody what happened for two straight years. Never said anything to anybody about what happened in there. I had to build that confidence to mm-hmm. tell somebody this is exactly. What, what happened? happened. Yeah. What I went through. Yeah, yeah. and that's, I had to like really say this is exactly what I went through from A to Z. And when I tell you, I felt so much relief. Mm-hmm. I was like, Pretty and nice. this guy literally made me look like a fool. When I say a fool, an idiot. He just drug my name through all kinds of mud, and I'm like, you know what, God, you're gonna have vengeance for me because I'm not gonna speak on this right now. Right. But there will be a time I will speak. Mm-hmm. There will be a time, just not right now. So when I tell people the story, they're like, wow, is he really like that? Is he really like that? I'm like, I can't lie to you. You know, it's what I went through. Right. It's my story. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not, I just, I got to, I was like, you know what? I'm not hiding anything anymore. This is me, and this is what I went through. This is my story. And, you know, I'm going to go for about it now, two years later. So wow. that fear of like trying to hold things in and trying to be that perfect girl. It's off the door now. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to just give it to you straight wow. up. Yeah, right. That's it. And if you can't accept that, well, then let bygones be bygones. Yeah. Right. How about you, Sabrina? It sounds, it's like really small, but I think I fear just not being my potential self. Or I can even say not being what God called me to be. You know what I mean? Right. Because there's so many things that I would like to experience and so many things I would like to do. I would like to, you know what I'm saying, see. And I'm just like so afraid that like, the judgment of other people mm-hmm. right or even myself you know what i'm saying will cause me to like hold back whatever it is like that's really a thing for me at least like i really want to be everything that i'm supposed to be right. like in real life i yeah. don't want to fake like it on instagram right, right. i don't want to fake like it on twitter you know i want to really live the life that i like i want to really live the life right? right and that life might not be extravagant with like fame and fortune but i really right. want to live in my true self like yes. whether it's just it's me true. and my kid or me and my husband or just me and myself oh, like fine. and mm-hmm. where i'm traveling or i'm spending or i'm investing in this i want to live in my true self and if that's what god says sabrina you need to do this then that, i'm fine with doing it right. right but to live in a bubble and worry about you know what i'm saying like yeah, what everybody just, yeah like that's that's people are really in even me i really lived that life where i was like no i'm gonna post this Cause I want to make sure people see that. Right. You know what I mean? That's 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 not real. You know what I mean? Like, just be true to you. Yeah, it's better. I think I think a fear for me for the longest time would have been just not, again, not speaking my truth and not being able to live my truth. Mm. 
you know yes, what I'm saying? Explain okay, that. so so when I say not being able to live my truth, I mean, like I said to you, being transparent, mm -hmm. yes. right? I felt like I had always been someone who would just bottle things on the inside of me. Yes. And for the longest time, I always felt like I had to pretend. And it was just like, you know when you don't even know something is weighing you down, yes. but then you're just like, how do I move forward mm -hmm. from this. carrying so much load yes. and so much weight and it is it's like for the longest time i used to ask myself like am I, is this what life is going to be like is mm -hmm. is this it yeah you know and i had to decide literally and for i, I think i'm not going to say i had to decide because sometimes i feel like god literally has to force some things down my throat because mm -hmm. you know if left for me yeah. out of just being okay with you know just pretending yeah. you know pretending like everything is okay yeah, meanwhile not. i'm sorry but you don't even have your you don't, you don't even, you don't have it together yeah right yeah. and it's okay to be honest about the fact that you don't have it together mm -hmm. that's because the people that will be there will be there will be there mm -hmm. you know that's what i'm saying um, that's, that's honestly the thing so yeah i think yeah. that a common fear was just not being able to live my truth and live really you know and you know i'm glad that i got to the point where i was just like you know what tomorrow it's okay for you to it's okay for you to enjoy life, live your truth, mm -hmm. be honest with yourself, be honest with people around you, mm -hmm. and just live. I sleep better at night, yeah. just thinking about the fact that, listen, I don't have any, like, deepest, darkest secrets yeah. that, like, you know, <laughs> I'm carrying this on my head. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, like, I can sleep better. Yeah. So, uh, my question to you is, like, you know, what, uh, I, I guess, what event happened in your life for you to say, you know what? I'm gonna live my truth now. Like, Ooh. what triggered you to say enough is enough? Mm. That I, I'm ready now. Like, I am really ready. ready. Like at this point, I'm not turning back. Mm. I'm ready. I think it was a. I had a. I had a bad breakup. Okay. I had a bad breakup that kind of led to a bunch of different things. That kind of right. led mm -hmm. to me sitting down and being like, "This is not you. Yes. You gotta get it together. Yes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like." Yes. That's that. That was it. Yep. You know, the That's breakup led too. to. Yep. You know, sometimes some things happen to you. Life happens to you, and you almost don't recognize yourself. Mm -hmm. I was doing things that I would have. If someone had said me, and I'm like, ain't no way. Mm -hmm. But literally, I was doing things that I just knew this was not me. Right. Right. And it's it's crazy, and I'm saying that now. And if I'm being completely honest, in those moments, I really felt like I shouldn't be doing this. But actually, you know what? It's okay. Let me just continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had to catch myself. Yeah, like, right. no, it's not okay for you mm -hmm. to be this person mm -hmm. because that's that's not who God wants you to be. That's mm -hmm. not who you're supposed to be. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I don't, I don't mean to always make things sound spiritual. But the truth of the matter is, if not for God, and if not for the fact that God literally will will send people my way that will remind me of who mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. It, it, it like I, I couldn't even tell you what it would be yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying so I guess everybody has that one experience or, what, or that one thing that is like it changes everything for them yes you know for me it was a breakup and in fact the breakup was maybe like the earliest things but I'm sure there are many, many other things other I could things. think about yeah. that you know I was just like yeah this is not how I want to live my life. Right. This is how I want to live my life. And I'm going to be intentional about becoming right. this person, person so that, you know, things can start to fall. The lines can start to fall for mm -hmm. me in pleasant places, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I definitely believe that. I definitely we believe that. that. We, we, we can agree with that. Okay, so I'm glad that you brought that up because what I was going to ask was people are constantly asking about God, right? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you live and just find ways to put God in the center? Find ways to put God in the middle through your busy lives, through the things that you go through, through your relationships, through your friendships. How do you balance your spiritual life? I mean, which I wouldn't, maybe I shouldn't use the word balance because it's not really balance. Your spiritual mm -hmm. life is you. That's, you know, that's your being, that's mm -hmm. your spirit. But how do you tie it all together? And what does it mean to incorporate God into every single part of your life as a woman? I think for me it's kind of, that's kind of hard because sometimes we don't have that balance. Mm. Sometimes you put so much focus into like school, right. work, social life, 
right. spiritual life that sometimes you feel like you're not putting enough mm-hmm. you know and that can weigh some it can weigh me down mm-hmm. it does because there are times i'm like you know i know i should be closer to god but because of this this and this and this and this which is not a valid reason right that i i feel like i'm neglecting him mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean i don't worship him it doesn't mean mm-hmm. that he's yeah. gonna neglect me because i know right. that when i extend my hand right. he extends he his mm-hmm. right and it's just that with the society that we live in today sometimes it is hard mm-hmm. to yeah. worship god it is with the with everything that's surrounding us just look the at noise. The, envi- the environment we live in right. it's not quiet yeah. enough you know and it's, it's gotten to the, to the point where me, as a person, I'm just like, I want to try so hard to be great in life that I don't want to leave God behind. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I'm in school. I get it. It's great. But sometimes school weighs me down. Mm-hmm. That even when I'm studying, I listen to gospel music. Or even when I'm studying, I listen to, the, I listen to a sermon because I don't know what else to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. even right. talking to somebody is not going to help. I just feel like just being able to hear God's word is what's going to help me persevere right. and push my, through. Mm-hmm. Just to push through yeah. with whatever I have going on. And, you know, I would say when I was younger, I was more spiritual because mm-hmm. I'm in my parents' house. I was at home going to church all the time. But, you know, now that I'm in, like, my professional program, mm-hmm. I feel like I don't have as much time. Mm-hmm. Even though it's, that's not a valid excuse mm-hmm. because right. you have to make time for God mm-hmm. no matter what, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I feel like I make excuses that God tells me you shouldn't make these kind of excuses for me because I am the one that put you where you are today. Mm-hmm. If not for God, I wouldn't be in pharmacy school. Right. I mm-hmm. would not be here. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be and I thank God every day that He gave me He gave me the opportunity to even be in this school or to right. even like achieve what I want to achieve. Right. Because you know it's, it's not easy, it's not. especially going through what I went through. It's it's really not. It's really not easy, and I feel like now that I need to really like give God time because I haven't really been giving Him time since college, and I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie, I really haven't. But I need to devote more time mm-hmm. to Him, like. Honestly, I really do. I do. I think it just comes to me out of habit. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be intentional about habit. You do. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember yeah. one time when I was going through my little, I guess, my little mental health problems. And I was just like, like you said, it was nobody that I could talk to that was going to make me feel better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not even my favorite person, which is my dad. It was nobody that was going to make physically talk to me to make me feel better right you know what i mean i needed like a supernatural being yeah so what i did was i'm (laughs) serious y'all it was like me crying wasn't wasn't helping me calling my best friend it wasn't helping i was like i need something way more big like i just need something that's like come like just gonna touch me like something. yeah you know what i mean yeah and so um i want to say it was mike todd but i'm not sure okay but it was something and he was just like you know, everybody wants to be spiritual, everybody wants to be better, everybody wants to communicate with God and whatnot. But like, it doesn't come easy for everybody. Like everybody has, some people have kids, people have work, this, this, that. And that's no excuse, but it does, it, it, it does, does affect it. Does it, affect affect it. Yes. And he was like, if you can set an alarm to wake up in the morning, you can set an alarm to pray to God. And literally, like, I want to say it was him, but it, I, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But I made an alarm, and I was like, you know what? I kind of feel bad for having to sit alone and talk to God or pray. But I wouldn't do that. Yeah. And literally every day, I, like, I, I mean, I snooze a lot. But I do take, and it's literally seven minutes, right? I pray, and then I manifest. And it's literally to God. I do that every day, if not more than once a day. You know, so right. now I have no excuse. You know right. what I'm saying? It's not an hour that's taken away from my work. It's not mm-hmm. an hour that's taken away from me you know going to take a class is literally just seven minutes i mean i could it, it could be 20 and 30 right. but that's just the time that i know for sure i can give to him you know what i mean and i can say everything i need to say in that time and usually sometimes i like write it down so that i know exactly what i want to say and what i want to send up I'm like hey you know check that mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. but it's just out of habit and now sometimes i don't need that alone like i already know what the one is for mm-hmm. so it's like okay let me go ahead and get my knees and pray really quick you know right. what i'm saying so it just it, it, it at this point it has become a habit so now somebody was to ask me, are you, do you talk to God often? Do you? And it's like, oh yeah, every day. And it's not because I'm better than anybody else or I just have all the time in the world. It's because it was, it's out of habit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's literally out of habit. Yeah. So that's, now that's I just, I have, it was intentional. You know what yeah. I mean? And it came from a point where I had nobody to talk to. It was like, right. 
And sometimes no phone calls will do it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think for me, if I don't pray, it's singing for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like to she has sing. A beautiful yeah. voice. By I really yeah. love to sing. Like it can be random, mm-hmm. and during the day I'm just singing. And I don't know why I'm singing, but I'm singing because I know that. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I didn't pray this morning, God, yeah. I'm singing. I know that you're still up there watching over right, me, right. and I know that you're still gonna get me mm-hmm. through the day. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, however you can speak to him. Yeah, speak to him. Yeah. Right. If you forget in the morning, okay? Yeah. In the afternoon. When you get the praise and worship going on. Something has to happen, you know? <laughs> Something has to happen. And yeah. it's just like, you know, I just wish that the old me that worshiped God was still me. Even though it's still me. It's still you. It's still yeah. me. Yeah. It's just that life has changed. Like, yeah. it's, life has it did a whole 360. Well, let's say 180. Well, sometimes, I, mean, I don't want to say it's a, it's a good thing to not be in touch, but sometimes I think about it, but I'm like, dang, I haven't prayed for a while. Or I haven't I haven't worshiped or whatever. It's like, God been treat me good. Like, yeah. Sometimes I think, I, I, I literally think I've been like, I've been living so good that I don't think I need to pray. Because God I mean, doesn't change. Right? He doesn't, though. That's a thing. He do, but he doesn't. And I'm just like, sometimes I look back and I'm, like I said, I've been like, I haven't really did nothing spiritually. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that's how good I've been living. God, I'm so sorry. Let me just say this. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the thing. Do true. you really feel like it's... So that's 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 a different conversation. But I, I, don't, I don't personally feel like it's it's the prayers. I feel like God will be God regardless. Yes. You know what I'm He's saying? He's omnipotent. Yes. Omnipresent. I feel like God He's will be God regardless. Whether you pray, whether you stray, whether you... You Same run dance. away, whether He's whatever it is, God will be God, God. Yeah. and He'll be, God. and God will be God in your life, regardless. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I don't think that, and that's why you were saying something, yeah. and I was saying, no, that's not God because mm-hmm. He's not gonna, He doesn't play those games. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, yeah, if you don't do this, well, I'm gonna do this instead, yeah, right. and then you're gonna yeah. see that this is gonna happen because right. yeah. He doesn't do all that. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, I like this conversation. I like it because we've gone from talking about pressure of um, getting married and being in a household that you know either or either you know just hearing from people or hearing from friends about being in households where there's pressure or maybe even putting pressure on yourself like you said you know to now talking about purpose and the things that you have to kind of incorporate into your life to live your life fully you know what I'm saying um so yeah I like this conversation but I'm gonna I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to let one of you ask one more question before we wrap up. Um, just to tie in everything that we've been talking about. Well, I'm going to just say this because my second favorite holiday is New Year's. My first one is Easter. Mm-hmm. And so since it's January and whatnot, it's still yes. fresh. We still, everybody still say Happy New Year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I like to manifest things, right? And they come back and be like, okay, that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Or, oh no, look, it did. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, if you could commit to something if you not have not already commit to something that you cannot spend any money on right Mm -hmm. so a goal that is not tangible you cannot return it you can't touch it what would it be Mm, that's a good question a goal that you cannot touch so you can't say a house you can't say a marriage you can't say children you can't say a car Mm -hmm. something that you want to know that by december 31st 20 21 mm-hmm. like you know what I'm a better person because you know what I mean like I know I tapped into me that. I think I want to use my voice more because I know God has given me a voice mm-hmm. for sure I know mm-hmm. he has so I think I need to use it in a way where it, it needs to be heard yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you want to say more? I, yeah. Yeah. Make it touch others or yeah. Do it again. I, I, yeah. I think, yeah. I want to invest more in what like the vessel God has given me. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So I think for me it's consistency. That's a good one. It's consistency because I feel like the ideas are not hard. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about the things that you want to do that's not hard. Right. Making the plans, that's not hard. Yeah, but being consistent. But being yeah. And starting is not even hard. Yeah, yeah. But being consistent. Yeah. And I don't even have to think too far. Yeah. My right. YouTube channel. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've said, yeah. Yeah. this year, I want to be consistent. Mm-hmm. And I want to see how mm-hmm. far I will go if I can be consistent. 
because a lot of times it's been start excuses start excuses yeah excuses you know what i'm saying but life is gonna happen they're going to like things are constantly going to come up it's true you know what i'm saying how like sometimes you go through a break and you're just like yeah something came up but it's just like no i don't want to make those excuses anymore this year i want to fight for consistency Mm -hmm. right through every single area of my life that's what i would say there's some lyrics on my mind i know it has gotten me through a lot of stuff i don't know why so you want to sing them to us (laughs) so you want to sing them You know, I feel like it looks so bad. So go ahead. Like, oh, I don't know. You're making me shy now. Like, ugh. hey, we wait. Anyway, <laughs> we you can sing. I love your voice. Wait, wait, so it goes. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me through fire. You heal all my disease. I trust in you. I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. All I need. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to like, like subscribe, oh. subscribe, mm-hmm. and leave yeah. a comment in the comment section <laughs> below. Down below. We will see you in the next uncomfortable conversation. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Bye.